Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. It reads this way, and this is Paul speaking to the church of Ephesus. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this world, yeah. against spiritual wickedness yeah. in high places. Verse 13, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Someone say the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done everything you can to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with yeah. truth, yeah, Lord. and having on the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. and your feet covered with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes, Lord. Above all, taking the shield of faith, yes. wherewith you shall be able to quench mm -hmm. all the fiery darts of the wicked, mm -hmm. take the helmet of salvation, yeah. and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. So, we're going to title this message, Stay Ready. Amen. We're going to say, Stay Ready. Stay Ready. Well, look at somebody. We've never been this before. Look at today and say, Stay Ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Um, um, my culture has a saying that if you stay ready, I like how these all tie together. Um, two weeks ago, we used a piece of the scripture. Uh, we wrestled out of his flesh and blood, and we talked about it's not real, but it's scripted. And we use a wrestling analogy like professional wrestling. That professional wrestling isn't real, it's scripted. It's real. Because what they go through is real. Uh, the physicality of it is real. What it costs them is real. But the outcomes have already been determined. And we ask believers, what we go through is real. Yes. But the outcomes have been determined. That's it. So we're not wrestling against people. We're not wrestling against people who get on our nerves. There are powers that are at work. Yeah. And even though those powers are at work, they're working from a defeated place. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Say that again. The powers that work against you are working from a defeated place. Amen. If you invest in them, then you lose with them. Yeah. Right. If you stand against them, you right. win. Yes. Amen. And so now, last week we talked about already. Mm -hmm. That we are already. We are already the sons and daughters of God. Right. We are already kings and queens of the Most High. So anything that's underneath us cannot defeat us. Yes. So we know who we already are. For what we believe for, we're in the past time. Our real time is in the past time. Mm -hmm. The truth of God is real. And we have the victory, even if we have not seen it in the earth oh. right yet. Mm -hmm. And some things you have to wrestle for in real time to experience God's time. Say so that again, some things you have to wrestle for in real time to receive in God's time. The adversary would love to pull you away from your promise. That's why he wrestles you. It doesn't wrestle you to keep your promise from happening, keeps you from receiving it. So if you're occupied, you can't receive the promise of God. He can't keep you from it, he'll keep you occupied so you don't get to it. The promises of God are yesterday and now, which means what he meant for you, you are going to have. So I want you to stay ready. In the book of Ephesians, Paul was talking to the church at Ephesus, and he tells them to do something in, um, in a figurative speech to put on the whole armor of God. Mm. He's speaking to the church at Ephesus because the people of Ephesus like to fight. Yeah. And so he's speaking to them in a language that they can understand. Good. Any fighters in the room? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And I do too. Um, all right, so he's speaking to us in a language that we can understand. And life on earth can be a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I want us to stay ready. And in staying ready, you put on the full armor of God. Okay? Um, any military people in the room? Anybody that's a former military? Y'all can help me. Uh, please uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm misspeaking. My father was in the Army. Um, God bless his soul. Army Reserve. We thank God for him. Amen. And I learned some things. May not know everything. Um, you served in the Army too, I believe. Um, yes, sir. And you were Army. People got to give up. I mean, be all you can be. <laughs> In the United States of America, we have four um, dispensations of the military. We have Army, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Marines, and the Coast Guard as well. We, we, Coast Guard made the fire. Then we acknowledge the Coast Guard as like real people until you need them. That will preach. Sometimes you don't get acknowledged until you're needed. So in the different areas and dispensations of the military, whether it be by land, by sea, under the sea, over the sea, in the ground, crawling, shooting, throwing bombs, every way we can protect and serve our nation and keep us safe in the United States of America, we have five different branches of the military who specialize in those areas. But they can't just be dressed like this to do it. They cannot be dressed like civilians and serve in the military. They cannot serve us and protect us like we need to be protected. They cannot um, get victory over what's coming against them unless they have on the right outfit. They have to have on the right armor. So the guns that you can buy from a pawn shop in this open carry state of Texas won't work if you're fighting in another country. You have to have specialized weaponry, okay? The, the motorcycle helmet that you use won't work when you're in battle in the army. You have to have the right armor to fight the battles. Right. You have to have on the right armor, as this scripture says, to withstand yeah. and to stand against it. So I want to get into it because I believe, especially in this particular time, that it's more more important than ever that we understand what we got. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And how to use what we have so that we're not just a Sunday church in victory for an hour and a half, but we can operate in victory on Monday and Wednesday and Thursday when you're not around things, but you still have the same artillery and the same God is working with you. I told some friends of mine, I'm not concerned about my Sunday church. I'm concerned about my church on Monday. I want to have victory every single day and not just feel it here. But live it there. Yeah. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, not just once a week, yeah. but for every day of our lives. Yeah. So now the same way Paul is telling the church of Ephesus before he leaves, hey, don't fight battles with the wrong armor. Right. Yeah. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's get into it just a little bit. I want to go back to verse 10 because he says something before he tells them to put on the armor. He gives them an admonishment to be strong in the Lord. Before you go to battle, receive your strength. Because the armor itself can't work if you're weak. So feed yourself in your own strength. Be strong in the Lord, watch this, and the power of his might. This is interesting how he said this. He just didn't say, be strong in the Lord and in his power. But he describes his power and might. He's not just powerful. He's mighty powerful. Okay, so at home I have this drill. It's currently in my son's room. I don't know why. It's just in my son's room. I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know if he's trying to do a clubhouse or an escape route. My drill, which I would like to be returned in the proper place, is just in his room for some reason. And the drill has to be charged for it to work. Now, when the drill is fully charged, it can blast a hole through any wall. But if it's not charged well, you'll hear a buzz. You'll feel a buzz if you hold it. But it's not strong enough to drill anything. It has power. It doesn't have might. It only has might when it's fully connected. It only has might when it's fully charged. And this is what I don't want for us. That we go on as Christians half charged. We go on as believers with our history with God. But not presently charged to do life. So it's not just about what we know about him. Previously. But how are we connected now? Amen. 
Yes. I don't want to be fully charged so that when something happens and I need my drill, I can drill. Yes. Okay? So if something happens and a circumstance happens and, and, I, and, and, and I'm in trouble, I know how to be fit. If I'm fully charged, I know how to handle it. Yes. Okay? So be strong in the Lord. Before you put armor on, receive God's strength. Yes. Because you cannot do life as you know it in your own strength. Right. As talented, as smart, as, as beautiful, as handsome, as wonderful as you are, life has a way of flowing on all of us when we cannot get through it in our own strength. That does not make you weak because you are natural. But if you receive God's strength, your weakness is not superseded by the strength of God. So scripture says, I can do all things through Christ that there's another one that says, greater is he that is than he that is. So if he is in me, then anything that's in the world shouldn't overtake me. But if he's dormant in me, I don't have power over anything that's against me. So I have to receive the strength of who's in me. I want to talk about this very clearly. Knowing him by name is one thing. Walking in his strength is another. And I just would like for you to believe because of all of your faults and your failures and your inconsistencies that you don't have access to the power of God. That's not true, right? You still, no matter where you are in life, you have access to the power of God. He has not taken his name off of you. So you can walk in your strength. It's not even emotional. I know who I am. Whether I feel like I know who I am. Up or down, I know who I am. And no way supersedes still. You know you have the strength of God. So if you know you have it, access it. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he says, put on the whole armor of God. You can't wear the armor of God without his strength. You can't exercise the things of God without God's strength to do it. Okay? I know a whole bunch of heathens who believe because they pay tithes that God is blessing them to continue to be heathens. Uh-huh. And I'm talking, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about your level of heathenism. I'm talking like high level heathen, like they, like, like level nine heathen. Like they, they do crazy stuff and they're rich. And they believe as long as they pay tithes that God blesses them in their foolishness and in wickedness. And if you're watching, I love you with your wicked stuff, but I need you to understand this reason why I won't wipe. Because I want to be pure before you and let you know <laughs> that you can't buy your way into right. God's strength. Right. God's mercy is different than God's strength. Yes. We live a lot every day of our life because of His mercy. Yes. But I just don't want to operate in the mercy of God. Amen. I want to operate in the strength of God. So that anything that comes against me, not only for me, but anything that's around me, you don't even have to be concerning me. You can't be the adversary around me because I have the strength of God in me. Yeah. I will serve notice because of who I am and where I stand that yeah. weakness and darkness can be around me because the light is so yeah. All you need is one light bulb to eliminate darkness. That's right. That's right. And when the light is on, the light doesn't challenge darkness, it just appears. Yeah. Okay. And the very appearance of light dissipates darkness. I'm telling you, you don't have to do a great thing. Just be who you are yeah, and darkness right. will flee. Yeah, right. Amen. Amen. Be who you are. You are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. You are the light of the world. Arise and shine for the light has come. The glory of God is within you. You be who you are. Amen. And then when people are around you that don't like you but can't understand it because they're dark, they have a problem with you. Let them have a problem. Be who you are. Don't darken yourself to fit in. Don't darken yourself to fit in. You don't fit in dark places. You are the light of the world. There are people who have a problem with you because you expose who they are simply by being who you are. Be who you are. The light is coming. Be strong in the Lord. The power of this might. Watch this. You may be able, put on the whole of God, that you may be able to, and the scripture says in verse 11, stand against. The wiles of the devil. I want you to hear very clearly. We don't use the armor of God to attack people. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. All right, sir. We don't use the armor of God to attack people. We don't use the things of God to hurt people. Amen. Come on. Come on. We use the armor of God to stand against and to withstand. To withstand. 
and to stand against. You use the armor to stand. You don't use the armor to fight. You use the armor to stand. Twice in the scripture, he says to, to, to put on the whole armor of God in verse 11 that he may be able to stand. Put the armor on to stand. You can't stand without the armor. Right. Yeah. Okay? Go down a little bit. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand. Says it twice. Now, I'm a parent. I've also been a son. And my mom, when she had to say something twice to me, me still think. I've been here the first time, so she needed to say it again. My mom. And if she had to say it a second time, she's not going to say it the third time with her voice. That's all right, Jim. Maybe a, a, a belt or a shoe or a skillet. It may be a swatter or another person. She may even say anything. But if I had to say it twice, that means you didn't get it the first time. And anything I have to say twice means I actually meant it. So he did not mean for us to use the weapons of God against God's children. All right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You're not fighting God's children. Yes, sir. That's good. You're fighting against principalities. Yeah. You're fighting against powers. Yeah. You're fighting against rulers of darkness. They may show themselves in a person, but you're not fighting the person. Right. So you have to be very careful how you deal with God's people. Because yeah. oh boy, can I get into this? Go on. Okay. Very quickly. This is not in the notes. Don't worry about it. I got you. I love you dearly. Okay, so there's a passage of scripture that says, touch not my anointing. Do my prophets no harm. No tongue. Okay, so now, do you know the word anointed is one of the very few words that are in past, present, and future tense? Quick Bible study. You'll get this when you do all my Bible studies. This is going to be great. Okay, so let's use the, the example of David. Okay, so when David was anointed. Physically anointed. He was anointed to be king. Yes, he but he wasn't put in the place of kingship yet. Right. Right. He was anointed for a future. Yes, right. yes. Okay? David was replacing Saul, who messed up. Yes, sir. But when he found Saul and could kill him, he said, I can't do this yes, to the Lord's anointing. Yes, right. Even though Saul, God's presence loved Saul, David still recognized him as the Lord's anointing. Yes, He's right. talking about a past anointing. Yes, yes, so we see the anointing for the future, but the anointing for the past. I'm looking at people who are presently anointed. So that means the anointing word is past, present, and future. So when the scripture says, don't touch my anointing, it says, don't touch who was anointed, don't touch who is anointed, don't touch who would be anointed. But who can you touch? Can't touch anybody. Because you don't know who, who was anointed, you don't know who is anointed, you know who's anointed for a future purpose. So they can be acting a fool now and still be the Lord's anointed. They can be acting as your enemy right now and still be the Lord's anointed. They don't look nothing like God right now. His hand is on their life. They can say they come to you to wake up the anointing that's in their life. So you can't touch them the wrong way. Even if they're touching you the wrong way, you can't touch them back the wrong way. That's right. Bad action does not give you the right for bad retaliation. I lost half my church. Bad action does not give you the right for bad retaliation. You don't have a license to get ethnic when people get ethnic with you. You can't take off the armor. Nor can you use your power for evil. Let's get into it. Let's look at the different things that are the armor of God. Okay, there are six different things that are the pieces of the armor of God. We're going to start with verse 14. Having done all the stand, we're going to stand this way. <clears throat> stand, having your loins girded about with truth. Um, there's there's um, different different um, versions of the Bible because of the loin belt or having your waist covered with truth. Having your waist secured with truth. Okay, if, if anybody knows what I'm talking about here, I have on a belt right now and I thank God for this belt because it's a belt. It's keeping a lot of things cut. Glory to God. And so, what I would like the hallelujah, um, because, you know, because watch this, because the jeans fit. What? Help me. The jeans fit, but they wouldn't be secure. 
Without the belt. Okay? So, your armor means nothing if your garment isn't secure. Okay? So, the best way to keep you secure is that God's truth. Okay? We'll get into it deeper. Alright? So, it's not just about um, not just about when you hear the Lord and Spirit about the truth. It's not just about that. It's about you being centered. It's about your core. Before anything, you're going to stand in God's truth. Before you can use the weapons, you have to be girded in God's truth. <laughs> if not, you'll use the weapons wrong. Or to your own benefit. And we're not standing in our own truth. We're in a day right now that people have developed their own truths. To do what they want to do. This is my truth. Okay? I'm not dismissing your truth. But if you're going to understand the righteousness, you have to stand in God's truth. So your truth... Okay, I'm not dismissing it. But what does God say about your life? Okay? So now... Got to be settled in God's truth, all right? So we have the belt of truth, and then the breastplate of righteousness, all right? The main part of your anatomy, as much as you're, if you're in battle, you got to keep this situation coming. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget watching a TV show, and my favorite character got shot. And I was like, oh, you there. Take it, take it. And then you pop back up, and you took the shirt off, and you had all like that. Yeah. had the bulletproof vest. Yeah. You had the hole in it. And so, so the shot was strong enough to knock him down, but the vest kept him from knocking. Okay, so imagine that being your breastplate. This breastplate is made of dresses, and not all. Not all, because our righteousness has limits. Right. Hello. I'm still losing my trust. Our righteousness has limits. God's righteousness is way stronger. Impenetrably, okay. So now your feet covered in peace. That means you walk in peace. Go to truth, breastplate of righteousness. You walk in peace. You walk in peace. You ever know somebody? Don't don't say the man out loud. You ever know somebody? As soon as they come into the room, this is like this. This they come into the room. Right. We don't even know how to describe it. It's not a, not a noun. It's just a uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, 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 uh. Like everybody's having a good time, but they walk in the room and stuff. That. Uh, yeah. Oh, all the, yeah, all the dogs. You know, it's just, it's just, when they come in the room, there's no peace when they walk in the room. So imagine you being called to be the opposite. Imagine you coming into a room that's full of frustration and full of filth, but because you walk in peace. And you don't walk in peace because peace is there. You walk in peace because peace is in. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Scripture says, blessed are the peacemakers, yes. but they should be called the children of God. Yes. Children of God make peace. Yes. Come on. Yes, where there is nastiness there, where there is fighting there, where there is confusion there, we walk in peace. Our feet are covered in peace. Yeah. And now wherever our feet land, peace lands. Yeah. Can you imagine you being a peacemaker in your household? Yeah. A peacemaker in your family? A peacemaker amongst your friends? And when you come along, each of become stellar because yeah. your presence is there. Yeah. Negative conversation has to end because the peacemaker is there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Above all, taking the shield of faith. I love this. So the shield of the armor, the shield of the armor, like Thor. You know what I'm saying? Thor with the horn shield situation. Do you know everybody can touch Thor's shield? Except for. I'm not being Captain America. I'm going to use Captain America. I'm getting all the arms. Right. Everybody can touch Captain America's shield. Had to get right because they, you know, spin a while. Okay. Right. So Captain America has a shield that no matter what anybody else did, they couldn't touch his shield. And his shield wasn't just a protector, his shield had powers in it that only he could operate it. So you could grab your steel, but you wouldn't have the power. It would just be a device in your hand. But in his hand, it's a mighty weapon. Okay? We have the steel of So now, anything that comes against us has to go through faith to do it. All right. Bell of truth, breastplate of righteousness, your feet covered in peace, you have the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench 
all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the thing that's very interesting in these this in Ephesians 16 is that you're going to have fiery darts coming through you, coming for you. They're going to be blocked by your faith. They're going to be blocked by your faith. I know people who blame God for the fiery darts that come against them. And they'll say, God, where were you when my cousin died? Where were you when I lost my job? Where were you when I got COVID? Where were you when this breakup happened? Where were you when I lost this? I thought this relationship was going to last. Where were you? Why didn't you tell me he was no good? Where are you? And I'm thinking, where's the shield? Because your relationship with God does not prevent things from happening to you. It prevents things from overtaking you. If you look down or not, things are going to happen in your world. And usually you don't get a note from your adversary when the things are going to happen. The devil does say like this memo, said at 9, 4, and 5 on Tuesday, I'm going to hit your house. Just want you to have a heads up so we can have a nice little fight. This is not how he does. There is no, and my army man will tell you, if you're under attack, the ones who are attacking you, they're going to tell you when the bomb's coming. This is the bomb. And you have to be ready. Which means you have to have your faith ready at all times. That's right. Come on. At all times, your faith should be ready. And watch this, verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. All right. So that means your helmet of salvation. That means salvation is a feeling. Okay. Yeah. You got to wear it. All right. You got to wear it. I got a, a, a wonderful woman of God in here with a nice little headpiece on it. It's beautiful. Yes. All right, she comes up, she comes through the head. Yes. I like that. It's wonderful. And the only fit her, right? So I can't worry what's hers. All right, that means her headpiece is hers. Right. It's fit for her. And no matter where her head goes, the headpiece is there. All right. If she does a cartwheel, the headpiece is right there. Don't do a cartwheel. Don't do that. All right, he's going to do a cartwheel. All right, we don't have no So what I would like for you to understand is where the helmet goes is coming on the head, right? All right. It protects you. All right. It keeps you. All right. It covers your mind. It covers your brain. It covers the central part of your intelligence. Yeah. It's not based on the feeling. Right. You know it. So even if you don't feel saved, <laughs> the hell of salvation is there. Amen. You wear it, all right? Let this mind be in you, all right? So you can't operate in Christ's strength if you don't have his mind. Amen. You right? No matter what you're fighting, remember who you are. Remember who you are. The helmet is there and the sword of the spirit. Which, if you think is the most active part of the armor, you have to have everything else secure first. You can't use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, unless everything else is secure first. Right. Let's look at the six elements right here. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Those are the elements of the armor of God. The word of God cannot be handled correctly unless you're walking in truth, Amen. righteousness, Amen. peace, faith, and salvation. If not, you'll use the word of God to weaponize the wrong things. You'll hurt the wrong things. You'll, you'll hurt something that you think is an enemy and it's not. You'll use it to your own advantage and not to God's strength. You have to operate in truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation Amen. for the word of God to be used properly. Right. Is that alright? Yeah. Let me take you here. Let me take you here. This is why I support 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. This is why it's, why it's very important. 2 Corinthians 10. 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians 10. 3 and 4. We alright? Yeah. Once again, I'm going to read for the King James Version. I like it. It's authoritative. That's the strength of the muscle. All right. Name your children James. You're going to have children. I'm going to want to make All right. So, St. Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And I'm going to stop there because there's another, another piece of that that goes deeper. So the weapons that we use aren't physical. They aren't carnal. But they work. They're not, they're not weapons 
as you would buy in the store or holding your hand. These weapons are mighty through God and they work. The armor works. The belt of truth works. The breastplate of righteousness works. The feet covered in peace work. The help of salvation works. The sword of the spirit works. God will not have you put on armor that does not work. Remember David? Remember David in the Bible? When David was, um, stepped up to defeat Goliath, the, the everybody else was running from Goliath. All right? Saul was running from Goliath. David said, I'll fight him. I'll fight Goliath. And Saul tried to give David his armor. Excuse me, sir. I can't wear the armor of someone who's running from a fight. Because obviously, it didn't work for you. <laughs> now, wearing this, I'll wear with what's been tested. I've killed a lion. I've killed a bear. With this armor. And that same armor I will use works. So I'll defeat this Philistine. Never call him a giant. Call him a Philistine. You know what's important to call him a Philistine? Because as long as he saw him as a giant, he was seeing as bigger than he was. What he was was a Philistine. His size meant nothing. This man doesn't know God. So this armor that I use is God protected. And nothing that's against God will win against his own. Yes. So it doesn't matter how big he is, as soon as I use what I got, I'm going to have victory. All right. You got five small stones. Read the Bible, you only use one. You don't have to even use everything in your artillery yeah. when you fight against. This is what you need. You need to make sure that you have on everything because you never know what you're going to need to use. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Okay? You need to make sure you have everything because you never know what you need to use. There's certain times the help of salvation is very important in this particular situation. Uh -huh. Whereas the sword would work, the help needs to be on. Uh -huh. You see what I'm saying? There's, there's certain times where the feet covered in peace is the most important thing uh -huh. in the world. So it, it doesn't matter what's most important at the time. What matters is, is you have access to what you need when you need it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So when battles come, you know what to use. That's right. Okay? So that you're covered and you can withstand and stand against. My father, James White Jr., God bless his soul, 72 years old now. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, stop making fun of your grandfather. <laughs> my, my granddad is 72 years old, and he is an army man. And the last war that happened um, when the United States uh, was bombed in 2001, we sent over troops in 2002, 2003, and 2004. And my father was called to that particular situation. I'm thinking to myself, he's in his 50s. Um, probably should not be using any kind of weapons, all right? If my dad is fighting, we're gonna lose. We shouldn't do it, right? But he got called anyway. My dad was called to the station, that they had several stations that were set up, and he was not allowed, and this is to be careful, he was not allowed to leave the base. So everything that he was called to do was serving inside of the base. He was not specifically going to be called to go out into battle. He was called for service on the base. And my dad was there for over a year. He came back, showed us photos of the base, showed us photos of him and all the things. He brought back some stuff. Probably shouldn't have brought back, but it's okay. Um, Statue of Limitations is gone. It's been 20 years. We love you, Dad. And Dad showed me something. <laughs> but Dad showed me something that was very interesting. That even though he was not specifically supposed to be on the front line, my dad still had to wear armor. Yes, sir. It's amazing that he still had to wear armor. And I asked dad, well, dad, if you didn't go out to battle and you're just still on the base, why do you still have armor on? And he says, we had to stay ready. Because you never knew. Right. You don't know when airstrikes will happen. You don't know what you're supposed to be inactive. But you don't know when you're going to be called into duty, and everybody may be needed. So even though he was not supposed to be there on the front line and use a weapon, he had the weapons on him. Because you never know. I don't want to be caught without my armor on. Because you never know when you need it. You, I don't want us to wait until the trouble comes to try to find where our armor is. Have it on and stay ready. Which means walk 
in your armor every day. Amen. Amen. Make it seem uncomfortable, but it's necessary. Can we pull up those six things again? Let's walk in the armor every day. Walk in truth every day. Never know when you're going to need it. Amen. Walk in God's righteousness every day. You never know when you're going to need it. Walk in God's peace every day. Walk in faith, not just by faith, but in faith every day. Walk in salvation every day. Not just with saints. Walk in salvation every day. Walk with the word of God every day. Stay ready. I don't want us to be battle conscious. I want us to be battle ready. I don't want us looking for a fight. Those fighters chill out. May not be a fight today, especially if peace is available. Mm. Okay? So let's not look to go to war every time. But if there's a war happening, won't you know that the weapons that you have, they're not gone. They're mighty through God. Which yeah. so means if you got it, you're going to win. Yeah. If you got to pray, you're going to win. Yeah. Pray, for, pray from a place of victory, not for it. Yeah. You are victorious as you pray. Your circumstances are an alert that you should do what God called you to do. So understand that every time God calls you to do it, you're going to win. Yeah. He calls you to pray, you're going to win. He calls you to consecrate, you're going to win. He calls you to fast, you're going to win. Don't fight. Be cool. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Use the armor to stand. Use the armor to withstand. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up this standard against him in Jesus' name. Jesus. You got a victory. Stay ready. Yeah. Stay ready. Yeah. So I pronounce over you victory today, Amen. victory tomorrow, Amen. victory on Tuesday, Amen. victory on Wednesday, victory on Thursday, Amen. victory on Friday, Amen. victory on Saturday, Amen. victory in May. Wow. Victory in June, July, can I go forward? Victory in 2024, in 2025, victory every single day of your life on earth. Amen. You will not be overtaken by what the adversary is sending to you. We won't be ignorant of Satan's devices, but we have all the whole armor of God. We will stay ready. We will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And our enemies have to come subject to the will of God amen. over our life in Jesus' name. You believe that? Let's try to remember. Amen.